Hello everyone, buenas tardes. Thank you for joining us again here in your home with Bella Entrepreneurs. Again, my name is Rocio Flores and I'm the founder of Bella. Bella, for those of you that don't know, stands for Brillantes Emprendedoras Latinas de Los Angeles. It's also known as just Bella or Bella Entrepreneurs. And really the purpose is to elevate the Latina entrepreneurial voice, particularly in the communities of South LA and on the East side uh, we really want to build up that community of support. So I am really, really thrilled today to be joined by Jeanette, who is here representing her her business, which is actually a mariachi. Mariachi Show Gallos Reales is their original name, as she was sharing with me. And so uh, let's give Jeanette a big shout out, you know, hand clapping from where you're at watching this. Uh, <laughs> it's really great to have you here, Jeanette. Thank you so much for taking the time. To, Thank you so much for having me, Rocio. And so let's just get started. So just share with us a little bit about you. Like, tell us a little bit about who's Jeanette, um, what is your business about, um, and just, just tell us a little bit about you. So my name is Jeanette, and I grew up here in Boyle Heights. I, um, I have a mariachi dad, so he comes from a, a musician lineage. So we're from Zacatecas, Mexico, and um, his parents are musicians, as well as my mom's parents as well. So somehow they both met up here at Mariachi Plaza, fell in love, had me, and it was very natural that I got handed a violin at some point in my life. So um, luckily I have grown such a big love for it that I have taken over essentially my father's business. He did actually start a mariachi, this mariachi in fact, back in the 80s. So now I am happily your neighborhood mariachi. I That's pretty much what I do full time. It just manages mariachi and bring music to people. And I just live here in Boyle Heights with my husband. We just got married last year and I'm a simple girl with simple pleasures. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, that's exciting. Yeah. Enjoying yeah. newlywed life, hopefully still. There's still that yeah. spark. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned your dad and you mentioned kind of taking over um, the business, but share with us a little bit, like kind of walk us through your journey growing up. Like as a, like what was your childhood like? Like what kind of, what did you see maybe in your dad or even just you yourself experience growing up? So I had a stay at home mom. So luckily I always had, you know, a hot meal, someone there, you know, for anything that I needed. But my dad was very busy. I did see that he was um, absolutely consumed with his job. And um, he he actually had, he managed this mariachi on a much higher level. He had a 12 piece mariachi. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. That's too many people. It's, it's too much. But I did see that his stress level was super high. He was a little tough on us. He was short, you know, because I think maybe he didn't manage the stressors of his business. Mm -hmm. So maybe for that reason i wasn't too inclined to follow his footsteps so although i did have some musical ability um i was in music classes in, in middle school in high school but i just didn't want to pursue it i thought oh no i'm going to get into medicine i'm going to get into marketing or, or what have you mm -hmm. um but i think because i just saw my dad just struggling so much and in a way i i felt for him but then i thought i i don't think i want to live through that i don't um but now it's sort of a lesson that I carry with me all the time because I try to not allow the stress of this job because it is super stressful to manage a mariachi. I really try to not let it get to me, although I am definitely still learning. And I, I, I face so many um, moments where I think, oh, no wonder my dad said this or no wonder my dad, you know, decided to do this for the business. So um, I really had a role model growing up of a person who was just like, Pers just persevering through anything ideas just really pushing for success and he was really hungry for success so i had a great role model in business i would say so what do you so what actually inspired you to to kind of like you said take over the business this was originally your dad's mariachi and then you kind of stepped into was this something that you like embraced fully? Was there a little bit of like, you know, discernment that had to take place before you were like, is this something that I really want to do? Or what was that? I, like? Yeah, I definitely had to think about it. And I did hesitate. There was a couple of years, I have been doing this um, myself for a couple of years already, maybe about three. Um, however, prior to that, there was a couple of years of, of like a push and pull of should I shouldn't I, I would extend my help towards the business, but to a, a certain limit, because I didn't want to um, again, stress out. 
Um, however, it was a really emotional reason why I decided to stay on. I just became so inspired whenever I would go play events. The older that I got and I saw my audience become younger, I would see little kids come up to me and, and, and want to grab my instrument. I'm like, yeah, grab it. I don't care. They won't break it. It's okay. And I started to see that there was a cultural value in what I was doing. Um, on top of that, in my mariachi is my younger sister. And I do feel like I felt like we, we gave each other strength. I felt like I wanted to continue so that she could continue. Um, and I also wanted to, I got a little more fired up to maybe hand it off to her, just like it got handed off to me. So um, my husband is also a musician. So I met him, fell in love, we play events together. And I just found like a newfound joy um, in, in playing mariachi. But I think it's because I got allowed the opportunity for it to be my vision. My dad did sort of step back and I was able to um, explore the way that I wanted to share mariachi with people. Um, and that was thanks to having my husband around, my sister. Um, yeah, it was kind of like emotional. I just, it was my heart leading me really. <laughs> oh, definitely. That's really beautiful. So you spoke, you know, a lot about what motivated you and inspired you. And can you speak a little bit more to like, the purpose and mission behind the mariachi. So, you know, it's, we want everyone out there to hear and to know, like it's so much more than just the music, right? What, what Definitely. is really the purpose and as you see it? Um, I feel I'll, the general purpose of mariachi is of course, just to bring joy. Um, but I think for myself, I'm a second generation. I'm a, I'm a Chicana girl that was born here with roots in Mexico. And I, I want to be able to bridge the gap between some of us that were born here and maybe, you know, it's not our fault that maybe we don't know all of the songs that mariachis can play or we don't know how to dance a zapateado. So in a sense, I want to sort of empower my own generation. Mm. Um, and I think it's really important too. in my mariachi, there's three female members. And I think it's really important for audience members, uh, for kids, for just anybody to see females doing it. Not only females just there but females leading leading the thing um kind of like rocking out you know so in my mariachi there's three girls and i i it's really important to me that they're showcased because um in mariachi women are not um i don't want to say that they're not valued but we're not really um important in mariachi the men the bravado is what's important but um yeah really i'm, I'm just here waving the flag for for women and for that cultural that the the ability to connect us to to Mexico for those of us that were born here. That's awesome. So what what um speaking to that, what what are some of the other struggles that you've encountered? Because it's not easy, you know. It's not <clears throat> all, all kinds of businesses. It's difficult. But what are some of the challenges or struggles you you encountered and maybe still encounter? I would say um, it's difficult um, for myself and including my clients and audiences to put a value, a monetary value on certain things. Um, our, our performances obviously have a financial compensation for them and um, our skill, for example, I learned to play the violin, but because it took me many lessons or it took me many years. So um, what I struggle the most is sometimes um, educating people in that mariachi is not easy and it's not it's not easy and it's not affordable to do. Um, we are wearing outfits that are above $1,000. Sometimes we're um, losing time away from our family. So sometimes I get like haggled and I think, do you, do you realize that I'm wearing gold earrings? I'm gonna make your mom cry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make your family laugh, you know? Um, so it, it's a strange world to be dancing around the financial compensation of, of sort of an emotional service, you know? it's. I don't know if you could, if you could relate to that, if you could, yeah, that's, that's one of the biggest struggles, I would say. Um, a couple of others are, are obviously being um, taken seriously as a woman. Sometimes people think that, um, uh, that they can talk to me a certain way or get things done a certain way because I look young and sweet, but um, I do have to put my foot down um, in certain situations, you know, um, to give myself the the esteem and the respect that I think a male in my position would have. Yeah, that's really interesting. I think that's not 
um, you know, we hear about like male dominated industries in business as well. And, you know, we don't always think about like the music industry as maybe one of those businesses, but I think you've brought to light really the, the harsh realities, you know, that you have to face, I think, um, to your point, being a woman in a male dominated industry, really, which is, yeah. is mariachi, right? Yes. Um, so what, what kind of tips or advice would you give to other, um, particularly uh, Latina women who are looking at starting their business or maybe are kind of in their first years of business um, in general, and then particularly maybe speaking to the industry that you're in? Sure. I would say um, something that I find really important is that I think you'll be motivated if you have your your point of view and your intention really clear and genuine. Um, I've seen a lot of companies come and go and it's very trendy or the logo is really cool, but there's no soul. And I would say that a long a, a business with longevity and a business that will succeed is going to come from within you and that is going to be able to sustain it. So I would say that in general, um, just lead with soul and lead with intention, because if you're not being genuine with your business, um, eventually people will stop following you um, or, you know, it just won't mean anything to anyone. So just be genuine in what you're doing. Um, as far as um, girls in music or girls in the arts, I would say be fearless. If you want to sing loud, sing loud. If you want to dance faster than the next guy, do it. If you want to paint, a mural instead of, you know, I, I want girls to go big, go for it because fear, um, fear is going to hold you back. So especially in the arts, if you, if you're going to be a person that is going to shine, you have to try to shine. You have to be eager about what you're doing. And people really like that. They like to see the spark. So there's a lot of people that could draw, maybe people that could sing a song, but only certain people can transmit magic to you and if that magic is within you there is nothing that can stop you oh my gosh that's so beautiful you're inspiring me so <laughs> much Jeanette thank you so much for sharing all of that that's beautiful okay. and I think in a time right now when you know we've been going through so much just in the last year with the pandemic but all the racial tensions and racial injustices we're seeing I think and and against different races but also against women and you know, I think your words really are going to resonate with all those that are listening right now. So thank you for just opening your heart and being super vulnerable with us and just sharing kind of what your what your experience has been, but also about what you're thinking and feeling. Um, kind of just a, a last question, I'll say to wrap it up, but feel free to take as long as the time you yeah. want to answer it. Is uh, just anything else you want to leave the audience with, assuming that again, there's um, kind of a diverse audience, you know, all, all folks will be listening, but mm -hmm. anything you want to say, um, last comments, final thoughts to maybe the Latina entrepreneurs out there too, anything that maybe we, we didn't capture in the questions that you want to share? Um, I would just say just some general advice maybe to everyone is just, is, is maybe what I said earlier is to put some magic in your life. If you want to do something for yourself, if you want to make a business, uh, if you want to start a business, if whatever you want to do, don't do it with fear. Do it like you're adding a little bit of magic into your life and it's going to just look at it in a positive way. Don't ever look at the the hurdles. I try to look at my business that way. If something happens, I just go, whoops, I didn't know how to navigate that. Oh, well, tomorrow's another day, you know, mm -hmm. um, just don't don't look at things so negatively and so heavily and just, you know, try to put magic and positivity in things and nothing will ever phase you if you stay happy and light, you know, just, I would just say to people just that, just stay, just stay positive and support your local mariachi. Mariachis are working hard. Mariachi girls are practicing, getting outfits done, getting, you know, um, learning a bunch of Jenny Rivera songs to make you happy. Like, um, invite a mariachi into your home and you'll find that we are sharing something really special, um, and yeah, support your local mariachi. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeanette. Um, again, mm -hmm. follow uh, the mariachi The I point down always because we're going to have the IG label down here at the bottom and the website. Please make sure that you support uh, mariachis in general, but particularly the mariachi that Jeanette's representing here today, Mariachi Chocayo mm -hmm. Reales. And Jeanette, thank you so much for your leadership and just your courage and strength that you transmitted throughout this interview. I'm just really humbled and appreciative of you taking this time uh, to share with us. So thank you so much. Um, you. Everyone that's out there, thank you so much for tuning in. 
Until next time, familia, remember to support and shop local, support your Latina businesses, support, support your mariachis in your community. Suerte, adelante a todos. See you later. Bye. Bye.